Hi, this is Jet and this is my quick review of the Small HD AC7. The model that I have is the LCD version with HDMI. The reason I didn't opt for the OLED version is that it costs twice as much as the standard one. And with OLED still in its infancy, I decided to stick with a more proven display. What's great about this AC7 is that it has a 7 inch 8 bit IPS panel which should provide a much wider viewing angle and better color reproduction than 6-bit TN panels. It's also one of the few monitors to be offered in a 1280 by 800 resolution for under $1,000. My first out-of-the-box impression of it was that it looked good. The housing is made of a soft-touch plastic and it feels sturdy enough. It's also a bit lighter than it looks. Unlike the DP6 or the DP4 which are housed in aluminum, you do lose a bit of premium feel by going with the plastic. By switching over to a plastic enclosure, the weight and cost of the unit goes down. I believe the idea of the AC7 is affordability and performance. By this price range, it's one of the better built field monitors around. The AC7 comes with an adapter plate so you can mount all sorts of battery brackets. I got the $60 Canon LPE6 battery bracket, which goes on the back with just two screws. Each battery lasts about two hours depending on the backlight settings. There's two slots so you can fit two batteries lasting up to four hours or more. The power switch is conveniently located on the bottom left side. All the controls are grouped on the top right corner. You got a scroll wheel which pushes down to select. These two buttons are customizable. At default they are set to false color and focus assist. You can customize them by holding down the button for two seconds. There are only two mounting holes on the AC7, one on the top and one on the bottom. The SDI ports are sealed since I got the HDMI edition. They do look to be upgradable and I'm hoping that small HD allows us to upgrade them later on in the future just like their DP6. Besides HDMI, there's also a component and composite input, but I doubt any of us will actually use this option. What sold me on small HD was the ability to update the firmware on the monitors. Features and fixes can be added simply using a USB drive. The panel itself is a glossy one. It gives the image more saturation and contrast. Most users might find the reflections distracting, but I didn't have much issues in my shooting conditions. I find that the brightness at 100% to be adequate enough for most situations, except in direct sunlight. A sun hood is still recommended if you're shooting outdoors. Most of the time, I had it set to about 80 or 60% brightness when shooting indoors. The backlight is LED, so you get instant on brightness. When I had it plugged into my 5D Mark III, I selected the Canon preset. This preset was designed to scale the signal to use the entire display, which in my opinion is probably the biggest selling feature for DSLR users. My initial impression of the image was satisfactory. Out of the box settings are a little extreme and I had to dial down the saturation brightness and especially the sharpness since the default settings are too high and it produced a very harsh image. After a few adjustments, I was able to closely match what I saw on my iMac. Other great and useful features are a false color which assists in exposure of the scene and three focus assist features that aid in determining what's in focus. Now if you have a DSLR that drops to 480p during record mode like the 60D, the AC7 can scale it up to fill the screen. But honestly, it might be best to just use the LCD on the camera instead. Simple reason for that is it looks like crap on this monitor or any monitor. It looks fine before you click record, but once it drops to 480p, the image were very blurry and it's really hard to tell what's actually in focus or not. Focus Assist did aid the shortcomings of these DSLRs. This is not a fault of the AC7, but the limitation of the camera's internals. Once I plugged it into my RED1, it was a completely different monitor. The amount of detail being displayed makes it perfect for focusing. I was able to hit my focus points consistently and accurately. The RED1 outputs in a full 1280 by 800 and the images are sharp and crisp. I didn't feel the need to punch in to even check my focus. I'm extremely happy with the results, but I did however run into some problems. Even after updating to the newest firmware, focus assist and false color did not work correctly on my red at the moment. When adjusting saturation on the monitor, the image suddenly loses color and I have to change presets or restart the monitor. I have contacted Small HD about this issue and hopefully it gets resolved in a future firmware release. The red does offer false color and focus assist in camera, but having it accessible on the monitor is a lot more convenient. 
Overall, the Small HD AC7 is one of the best field monitors you can get for $600. If you want HD SDI, it'll cost you an additional $300. One thing I do recommend is that you get the acrylic screen protector for $19. The LCD currently is exposed without any protection. Reasons to get the AC7 LCD, it's the most affordable 7-inch HD monitor, has an 8-bit IPS panel with LED backlight, it's future-proof with firmware upgrades, has multiple battery solutions, and abundant of software features. Reasons not to get the AC7? It has a plastic enclosure, or you just want the OLED version. With so many features for a low price, there really isn't much reason not to get one. If you're currently in the market for a field monitor, definitely check out the AC7 from Small HD. Once again, I'm Jet, and thanks for watching.